Fans, where you're joined by myself and Steve, and we are going to be covering all things sports over the last week. We're talking URC rugby. We're talking international breaks. I'm trying to sound excited by international breaks. Yeah, I know. What a waste of time. We're talking Pro cricketing selection. F1, MotoGP. Um, the IPL's just started. Stevie, there's a, not as much going on, but it seems like it's developing into, um, into a new season of sport. But first of all, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine, fine. Things are a little bit cooler this side. Um, with the heat wave season, we've done a little bit, so we're appreciating that. And uh, yeah, good weekend of, of South African sport. Um, so can't complain. Can't complain, Skull team. Yeah, can never complain with, with South African teams doing well, particularly in the URC. Um, Stevie, let's get into, this has become a very um, somber part of the show for me, the, this prediction show um, yeah. that we do in week on week predict three sporting matches between Steve and I and see who comes out on top. And it hasn't been good. Um, coming into this week, I was losing 5-2. Um, um, mm. So really, really scrambling. Um, and we, we went for three three um, rugby predictions. Um, so the first one being um, Connacht versus Lions, um, where, I mean... Lions essentially out of out of nowhere, having received a red card, went to a place where no other South African team I don't think has won yet in, in Galway and managed to get a 38-14 win. Stevie, mm-hmm. my prediction was Connacht by five. Your prediction was Lions by five. So, I mean, both of us way off, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think even the Lions sitting in the change you was going, sheesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what? Where did that come from? That's a, that's a boys. Yeah, Slava Kanye, you should go off more. Bro. Yeah, back it up, dude. Um, better say. <laughs> but, uh, so, that, that's a 1-0 lead. Match two was Stormers versus Edinburgh where it's a real shame and and it's because I went so conservative because I thought you wouldn't have faith in my boys, but just I went Stormers by 10, you went Stormers by 14. I mean, saying Stormers by 10 at home, it's just that was, that was criminal from me. Stormers mm-hmm. winning that game 43 points to 21. So, again, comfortable, comfortable win. And then Sharks versus Ulster. We both went Ulster. I said by <laughs> six, you said by yeah. 10. Um, and Sharks won by 10, um, 22 points to 12. So, Stevie, another one. It's 6 2. You no, know, the week of that. Uh, I'm starting <laughs> to feel like Leinster over here, dude. Well, in, in, in the race to in the race to 10, I think, I think I, I've still got a, I've got a little bit of leeway, but I need to start stepping on it now. Mm. Um, if you, if you, Leinster's anything to go by, you'll choke at the, at the final, <laughs> yeah, the final hurdle. Yeah. No, what, is it, what, what is this last round wins? <laughs> It's always last round. Really. That, that's yeah. how this works. Um, but Stevie, before we get into the URC fixtures, do you watch Chasing the Sun this weekend? I did. I did. Um, I mean, we all know how, I mean, it's 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 one of those, isn't it? Um, you know, every single horse train is going to be tugged and, uh, you know, takes you straight back. I'm actually really looking forward to this coming weekend because... Oh, the first yeah. weekend of the of, of the World Cup, um, I obviously cut it from here. But moving forward, now it'll be the stuff from when I was actually in France. Um, so it's gonna be like a nice little trip to memory lane. All the press conferences and stuff that they show, and like the trainings and the matches and stuff like that. I'll have actually been over there, so it's gonna be a nice little little throwback. Um, you, you're hoping for a little a little sneak peek in the background there, or is there some information we don't know? We're gonna see Stevie yeah. underneath <laughs> that, 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 that under the camera. camera. No, yeah, unfortunately. Didn't get the call out this season, but uh, one out. one day. Oh, didn't I get mean, the call that is, that is a, any rugby um, broadcaster's dream, right? To make, but, just to make uh, a chasing the sun. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see. And, and when we, we, yeah, when we do when we do the three peat, um, then 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 you'll, then you'll see Steve there. Uh, can I label a, an early criticism? Yes. And I'm a bit worried about whether this is just for the first game or whether it's going to be for all the game. But the lack of um, coaches' mics. During the first game, for me, it was what, a big not, not hearing. Not just, from yes, because because we had we heard well, we heard we didn't hear anything. We just saw the reactions. Yeah. Um, but in the first one, we heard you know them actually speaking about what's going on during the game, and for me, that yeah. was like the biggest insight for me of the entire thing. Like the halftime talks, obviously, are big, but I really enjoyed watching the during the game reactions that yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm hoping it was just a one sort of game because if there's none of that, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. Yeah, I think also 
particularly for that England game, I want to hear what is going on. I mean, all three games, you think about the one point in it, you know, the, yeah. the big calls yeah. on the, on the scrap yeah. and stuff like that. The, yeah. the tension of those, I just really want to hear what was being said. It, at it, the could, time. Be, it could be maybe actually too much insight, to be fair, because it's largely the same coaching staff. Um, but I mean, it's chasing the sun. It's 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 just it's phenomenal to watch. It's never going to have the same like story arc as the last one, where we really yeah. started at rock bottom and came, came world champions. Like that was like you know written in heaven, and now it's like well, we're one of the favorite. Yeah, they, they, they try, they try, they try to create that. You know, obviously we had that end of your tour, which wasn't too great, and they sort of try to create that narrative that we had you know fallen off a little bit. That you know we were, yeah. they, but we were like guys, we were always within the top three to four starts going yeah, to the World Cup. Yeah, like, yeah. It was never, right. We were never underdogs in that World Cup. Yeah. But, no, it's it, it's great. Love it. I I had to scramble and chase to manage myself to get like a VPN to watch this side of the world, but had to be done. But Stevie, let's yeah. get into the UFC. Yeah, well, four out of four, isn't it? Uh, so we saw Sharks kicking things off this weekend, 20 <laughs> points to 12 victory. A lot of questions asked. Is them that being back? Uh, Stormers very um, comfortably beating Edinburgh. They've had a good season so far at home. So Stormers very much, as uh, Dom Dobson was mentioning earlier, do a dark time the season. Important victory. Lions with an emphatic victory. I mean, I think that probably the the, the result of the weekend, especially going down to fourteen men and yet running in went to final. I think the last time I, a, any South African team won that, I think was the Springboks back in like two thousand eight. Wow. Um, so yeah, so it shows you how dominant uh, and and Lion Tides in general have been over us in that part of the world. And then Bulls, 31 points to 10 victory over Dragons. Uh, I mean, comprehensive. Could have been probably been big, a, bit, uh, a bit more. But um, they've set up a very nice clash against the to this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I mean, I suppose you start with the Sharks. Uh, is them, is the, have they turned a corner? Or do you think this might be a bit of an anomaly result? I, I do think they've um, turned a corner. I think, I mean, we saw how good how dominant their forward pack was. I mean, they're literally bringing off a bomb squad or bringing on rather a bomb squad of box. Like, yeah. I feel like there's only so they are, they, they've like plugged away at the same tactic, just recruit spring box, recruit spring box, recruit uh, spring box. And I feel like that could only go on for so long without it working. So I do feel like it's slowly, it's slowly um, starting to tick, particularly in their forward pack. Um, and now it's just a kind of, I think about the backs now, catching up but um you know an Elster team that's that's doing well in the TRC um so I know I, I was impressed and and I, I think it'll be a good test again this weekend versus Edinburgh mm. yeah I mean I think I think the front row was a big thing and and John Plum she was moaning a few weeks ago about the fact he hasn't been able to select his his best side and he was saying that for the first time this season he's been able to select his best side and I think it did show um yeah, I mean, for me, the, the Sharks have always relied so much on that scrum um, for, for that sort of set-piece dominance. And when you've got Oxen Chair, Vincent Koch, you know, Bongi Benambi as your front row, you know, that's that's yeah. what you mentioned, according to his days, and then Stuka, and all that, adding Trevor Nikani to the mix next season. Uh, and yeah. so it's it's a bit childish. Um, but in a team among stars, Ethan Hooker, um, uh, a nice, and, and not a non-household name coming away with man of the match. So... Yeah, Interestingly good. enough, you know, I've, I, we've been saying that they've been lacking a a, a good inside centre for for a while. This is they're, they're kind of their problem. They announce Andre Estes, and then the next game sure. out, um, Ethan Hooker yeah. goes over as, as a man of the match performance and through. inside centre. And he's also he's, he's also he's a big lad. He's to, uh, to almost 100 kgs <laughs> and, and about 1.9. So he's a, he's a large large human. But um, I think it just shows you how much they've missed that that presence in the midfield. Um, so I think a lot of things starting to click into place. Um, too late, Along with really. Not backing Barrett Cohenbosch anymore. <laughs> yeah, and CM Suku. Yeah, I mean we've been, we've we've only been saying it the entire season. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's actually it's so good to see him have a stretch of games and and he's growing into it as well. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see what he continues to do with that jersey and just um in the like him uh, just as one to watch within the, like the South African setup in general. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, it's far too late for them to do anything in the URC anyway, so we can move right along because, you know, they're going to finish maybe a 12th little push. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I think a very significant result is that Stormers game. I think Stormers have, I mean, they're one point ahead of the Lions, which shows two things. First of all, how good of a season the Lions are having, but I think also how Stormers have not quite been the same team throughout the season that they have been the last two seasons. Um, for me, they looked a lot better recently. 
Um, but I think I mean, you you as a home fan, I reckon this this is the stretch of games where you start proving that there are genuine contenders. And do you feel confident yet, or do you think we still you still got a relatively a lot of work to do? I think I mean all of the South African teams pretty much have a good home stretch of fixtures now, and we love the late surge up the table. Um, if we want any chance of winning or getting close to it, we need it. I think we need to finish and kind of. Yeah. The, I mean, we fit at the moment. Fourth, I mean, third might be a bit of a, be a bit of a push, um, but not completely out of sight. Um, I just think it's it relies so much on us being at home, which which is yeah. why I say I think top three. Then you can maybe there's a chance that. Uh, that the Bulls and, and, and Nets, they get knocked out by someone else and then you get a home final all of a sudden. Um, I think that makes it a complete difference. But I mean, a lot, a lot of, again, a lot of these South African teams had a lot of home games in, in this last kind of um, stretch from um, week kind of 13 to 18. Um, like kind of not more than two away fixtures and essentially that's been the, the Achilles heel of most of most South African teams. Um you know, Lions getting one out the way. I, 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 so, I mean, to t- just to finish on the Stormers, I think, I think success would be third or fourth. I'm hoping yeah. third. I think third will be very. I'll be very stoked with. I don't think we'll get yeah. to second or first, obviously. Um, but I want to hear from you about about the Lions. What what is success for you this season? Top eight. Uh, top, top eight. eight. Just, just top eight. Champions Cup. What well, Champions Cup qualification? I mean, you eighth already. You know. Um, so I think that for me is is the most think, important thing. Yeah. So so you, you don't you don't think you don't think any higher. No, look, I mean, well, so top eight, I don't really care because at the end of the day, I think you know fourth, fourth, fourth is. I mean, we're we're we're, we're five points behind Munster. So if you go on a really good string of games, you could maybe sneak a fourth and get a home playoff. That would be. That would be a massive. Yeah. But to, I think at the beginning of the season, if you had just said you, playoffs right. and a spot in the Champions Cup, I'd say that would be a really successful season. Yeah. We, we Do you want to, it's, I mean, if you look at between, between fourth and like 12th, fourth, fourth and 11th are nine points. Yeah. So, so, so coming in and out of the, that top eight, is actually, there are going to be a lot of moving shakers mm. over the next couple of weeks. Like, I mean, for example, this, this, this dropped down to 10th. And yeah, like, exactly. Oh, I'll actually... Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I think looking at this weekend, you got the Lions, Lions Ospreys. That's a massive uh, game because <laughs> Lions beat Ospreys. They can suddenly go eight, nine points clear of them. You know, so there's a massive swing there. For example, yeah. um, and I think those, that's, that's why those games are important. You know, Ulster taking on Stormers, a big, huge game for the Lions because regardless of that result, the Lions mm-hmm. win and they'll overtake either the Stormers or the or Ulster because they're one, one, one point behind Stormers and level on points in Ulster. So. Um, you know Edinburgh. You know if Edinburgh were to slip against the Sharks, for example, and all of a sudden the Lions could be sitting up a bit sick. Yeah. But um, so it's incredibly, it's incredibly stacked. It's now coming up down to a lot of other games yeah. being as important as as the games you're actually going to be playing. For sure, and I think looking ahead at this weekend, obviously the big one is going to be Leinster Bulls, and I'm hoping mm. that they both put out good teams. Um, and well, I think the Bulls definitely will. Hopefully, Lens to do. Don't just take this as a, <laughs> a walk in the park fest as they as they usually do. But shocked Edinburgh Stormers Ulster, um, as you said. Uh, I mean, Benetton Connacht is going to be massive now. Yeah. Um, Benetton need to win that, um, having lost this last weekend um, to Scarlet. So. Um, yeah, it's coming down to crunch time in the URC, so it's good to see it heat up a little bit, not just the um, kind of monotony of the the game on game game stuff. Um, but Stevie, let's get into the football. Um, and first of all, let's touch on Bafana. Two two games, one versus Andorra. Might have been the first time we've ever played Andorra, and I'm willing to bet the first time that South African that every single one of this team has ever been to Andorra. Um, but that was a one-one draw. We had eighty percent possession. That's sixteen shots. But you know, unfortunately, only only matters one. Um, Elias um, Mokwana with the twenty-fifth minute goal, and then last night versus away away to Algeria, um, a three-three draw. Um, Temba Zwane scoring um, two there brace. 
um, and Ukram Reiners um, in the 66th minute um, scoring one. Um, they had a player, um, Benzia, scored an absolute worldy flick up and almost bicycle kick esque. And I think he pulled the hamstring afterwards. But um, a <laughs> good game nonetheless. Just just the trials and tribulations that come with international football, which always yeah. seems to be a little bit odd. Um, but some other notable fixtures over the international break. Um, Germany getting two wins, 2-1 two, win over Netherlands and a 2 no win in France. So showing a good bit of form ahead of the Euros where they'll be hosting um, later on in the year. Um, Brazil versus Spain, 3-3 three, three last night. Um, and so Brazil getting a draw there and then a win away um, at Wembley, 1-0 win, um, beating the hosts, England. Um, and then England um, last night, drawing 2-2 to Belgium, Duke Bellingham last minute equaliser. Yeah, but Kobe Mayer, man of the match, eh? Kobe Mayer, I, I, I am a little bit converted on Kobe Mayer, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. He's, but I, I hope he's one not to one. like, to be fair. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't want him to be good because he's from Man United, but like, well, there's otherwise there's not much to hate about him. Um, but yeah, a, a lot to be excited about if you are an England fan. To be fair, a lot of um, talent coming through, but are they making the most of it? I think this Euros will be essentially the um, the last opportunity for Gareth Southgate, um, and then it will be on to the next one unless he gets um, a massive victory there. But Stevie, the Prem is back this weekend, mm. finally. An actual football. To be fair, I didn't mind the break. I didn't hate it. I was stress-free this weekend. It was quite nice, actually. Like my, I think I saved a couple of years of my life just not watching Liverpool um, for the first time in a while. Um, but the big game, obviously, of the weekend um, being Man City-Arsenal. Um, again, we, I mean, we spoke about the Liverpool City fixture two weeks ago. Was that the title decider? Ended up in in, the, in a one one draw. How are you seeing Man City versus Arsenal going? We saw John Stones get injured last night. Mm-hmm. Is that going to affect them? Who's going to be leggy from internationals? It is the Sunday late kickoff, so there is that to help them at least. Yeah, so they got they got a bit of time um, for for recovery and stuff like that. And you always wonder when people go off injured internationally, how injured they actually are. Yeah, um, you know, it's that oh, no, 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 oh, no. a little bit of a tweak I'm out here, you know, almost yeah. just like, yeah, I've started 20 minutes, I reckon yeah. I can, I can dust. So, what do you uh, look at told them that you have max 20 minutes? Yeah, yeah, no, go out and have a stretch, have a bit of a bit of a, it's basically like a training session, go out there, have 20 minutes out there, and then and then get up before some, um, you know, some, somebody decides to do something stupid. But look, I mean, it's it's once again, it's the look. You got Liverpool, Brighton. Um, I mean, obviously that game before could could be. I mean, Brighton would pull for a big result, and all of a sudden City can go out right top of the log with a win over Arsenal. It is at the Etihad, so I just think this is where City come into their own. You know, this this time of the season, the, you know, the title on the line where they can't slip up, and they, this is where yeah. you know you've got players there have all won <laughs> treble. You know, they've got the bottle, and the question is, can Arsenal? Arsenal win this game, they deserve to go on and be and genuinely challenge the title, you know. Um, yeah, Arsenal are first, so yeah, it's, they it's, win the, it, it's, it's theirs to lose, yeah, theirs no, to lose. so it's it's if they're going to be title contenders, this is the kind of game you have to win, this is the game you have to win, and they didn't last season, which is you know why essentially mm. they weren't in contention. They've already done it this season, they've taken they've only given Liverpool one point, taken off four from them, so they've ticked off one box there. Can they do it for a city? Um, it, it, it's it's the classic, you know, you know Guardiola versus his um, his prodigy Arteta. Um, obviously, with his time back at Man City, um, yeah. so there's just it's, it's becoming quite a layered um, fixture um, nowadays, which which just makes it um, that much more exciting. Um, yeah, I think we're also going to see. Um... In terms of fatigue, you know, obviously big Champions League runs coming in now as well. And um, so so really I'll get to the the business end of, of the season. So, you know, this is where injuries become so important. Often now, yeah. especially after uh, after international break, you might start seeing players who have been injured coming back. So it's it's about, you know, being streetwise with your with your with your squad as much as ever. Because you can't afford to drop points. You know, the temptation is to play your strongest team every single weekend. Um, but you do that, and you and you and big players get injured, and all of a sudden you're going to Champions League semi-final without 
know, two or three of your best players. Uh, yeah. And so it's an interesting time to see how, how they manage the squads. And that's where the squad death really comes in, um, which is usually where City come to their own. Yeah, that's just, that's, yeah, the, their bench is better than, than most team style lineups, which is often just what sets them apart. Um, but the best news is that Jesus, there's no more international breaks. Mm. The next international break is the Euros, and this is a tournament we actually like. Yeah, I know. Actually it's ama- it's amazing how we absolutely hate anything international until it gets to like a big tournament, and then we're like all in. Yeah, all in, all in, all in, all in. Absolutely. Um, but Stevie, the... Um, to move on to the cricket this week, uh, the IPL started this weekend. Yeah, um, and cheapest. I mean, we're, we're what four days in. We've already like seven or eight matches. The amount yeah. of IPL is just, is just mental. It's, it's near impossible to keep up with. No, no. I mean, there's two games of the weekend, and I just wish it started like an hour or two later because you know I, I usually sort of end up finishing work at about seven, eight ish, um, and I usually catch like the last. I don't know if I'm lucky. You know, so the four, the four PM start a bit for sure. That was a, if that was a six PM start, that would yeah. be like perfect. Aqua six, like the SA twenty is the ideal. But anyway, uh, we have had quite a few games. A lot of South Africans have been in the mix, which has been really good to see. So if you were thinking about getting into IPL, well, there's a lot of South African representation, but importantly, they're actually playing. You know, we've had in the past with a lot yeah. of South Africans involved, but not playing as your edge. Whereas we saw debuts for Nanjay Burgo over the weekend. Joe Katsia is getting a run. Devon Brevis uh, was in the runs as well. Um, so a couple of our standout performances over the weekend from our South African lad. Uh, I thought you see that two innings. One, he got a stock, got a 31 with about 150 strike rate. He got a three yesterday. Uh, shout out to KG Obara, who's been very, very good early on in the tournament um, for um, uh, Punjab Kings. Uh, he bought in against RCB. He went four overs, two wickets for 23 runs with an economy of 5.75. Um, which is a proper uh, shift. Difficult. And in uh, the other game that they played, uh, he ended up with four overs, one for these six, economy of nine, a bit expensive, but um, did get the wicket of uh, Shea Hope. So so he does tend to be a bit of a game breaker there. Um, other than that, uh, Diablo Brewers, as I mentioned, was in the runs, uh, a, bit of, a bit of a, maybe not, a, not the fast innings, uh, difficult to say he was the difference when uh, they came up just short in that chase. Uh, 46 with a uh, strike rate of 120 is probably a little bit slow uh, for what you ideally want. Uh, Quinton de Kock hasn't quite come off yet, but uh, I'm trying to find the game. Yeah, 100 classes, so I don't get it wrong. He was very much in the runs. Um, where was he going now? Yeah, well, that's like 100, 200 strike or something silly. Um, a very, yeah, a very, I mean, you, you come to expect that now from, from Klaassen. Um, yeah. Excited to see Brevis, to be fair, get a go because um, he actually didn't have the best of SA20 seasons. So to see him nah. actually get out early in the, in the competition, yes, 120 strike rate isn't great, but 46 runs can't be yeah. ignored either. So um, good start from him. Pretty stubs missed his opportunity, only getting five, I think, in the end. Um, I think the big one is do we see Quenna Mapaka ball with alongside Bumra at, at MI? Um, I mean, essentially, we're looking at all these players at the IPL. This could be our starting 11 um, at the at the World Cup, mm. essentially. Well, you know? yeah. I think I think a lot of these guys, I mean, you're Andre Burgess, for example. I don't think he would have been in Rob Walter's plans six months no. ago. Um, you can force in and have a good but, IPL. Correct, correct. You go and have a big IPL, all of a sudden you could change <laughs> change the, uh, the the attitude there. Again, I think Brevis' selection comes down to the IPL. I think Jail Katsia is is already on the plane. I think uh, it'll be re- it'll be reinforcing to see KG bowling nicely, you know, because I think that there has been a bit of a, a narrative popping up that he's not a great T20 bowler, which I think is a bit harsh. Um, so so I think that he, it, it, I mean, I think I'll be keen to see how... Um, Adam Malcolm goes as well. You know, he's been just right. getting better and better. Didn't have the best first game, but as a captain, for example, you know, we, we, he, needs, he needs confidence with the bat. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody's, nobody's doubts his captaincy abilities having going back to back at Sunrise's Eastern Cape, but um, there's another captain's armband over there in the IPL, so I think yeah. he just focuses on his batting for, yeah, for a change. Class, and obviously, we just wanted him to stay in that kind of form. Yeah, so, just, be, just be the best South African. Player, yeah, continue, 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 to, continue to be as destructive as he has been. Yeah, oh, so I think for me, I mean, it's just about 
seeing all these players getting confidence so that when we go to the Caribbean, we've yeah. got an 11 that can win us a World Cup, we do, which we do. I mean, we've always said going into any World Cup on paper, there are enough players and match winners to to win us the tournament. You know, yeah. um, I do think T20 is a, a format we've never given enough attention to. Um, and, and I'm hoping that's what the SA20 was going to sort of change. The fact that, you know, we've got these players playing in big games, playing in the, the, the big stage, but we've always yeah. underperformed this criminally. Is underperformed. Stage, this is a bigger stage than most T20 internationals, if we're being honest. Like the pressure yeah. that comes with the IPL is actually is where kind of, you know, diamonds are, are made because of um, the pressure that they put under and, you know, the money that they're playing for. It's just mm. the stakes are higher, right? Um, it's kind of though, Tim. You have a couple of bad games. You get, you can get yeah, very get quickly. Scripted. You have yeah, one bad quickly. season. You can all of a sudden not get a contract for a while. It's, I mean, they're always like the constants. For example, like a Lunginghi, for example, he's always been an IPL constant, not playing this season because of injury. Um, but some some South African players have have sometimes had one or two bad tournaments, and they've yeah. never seen an IPL again. Yeah, I think Rasi van der was there for maybe mm. one or two. Shipped it on, gone. Um, yeah, it's it's a cutthroat, cutthroat world of the IPL, and Stevie, it's a cutthroat world when it comes to Proteus contracts. Um, I Anrich looked here, nothing up. So so yesterday, the Proteus men's or oh, CSA announced um, who of the Proteus men will be receiving um, their contracts, um, and there are a couple notable mentions. Um, Starting with people um, with new contracts um, who didn't have previously, Nandre Berger, Tony DeZorzi, and Andile Hesakwaya has had before, then didn't have, and now is back in. Um, out is Anrich Nokia, um, who hasn't played um, for a while through injury, but is actually at the IPL currently and is expected to play there. David Beddingham, who took his name out of the um, SA20 to go play in New Zealand for... Uh, B strings South African time produced played very well in New Zealand, um, and no contract for him. Um, Wayne Parnell hasn't really been playing for South Africa. Quinton de Kock, um, Sasanda Magala, Keegan Peterson, um, and then most notably of the people who managed to retain their contracts um, was Ryan Rickleton and Bjorn Vertain, both of which actually haven't played a lot of approaches cricket recently. Stevie, I think the biggest one is. Anrix Mokia and David Beddingham. Let's start with Beddingham. As as I mentioned, the man takes his name out of the hat for the SA20. He says he wants to go play um, test cricket. He's He makes quite a, you know, almost left South Africa to, to never play again. Has come back to earn his spot. Has earned his spot. Showed a lot of promise and um potential with the knocks that he's, that he's had at test level. Went to New Zealand with the B-string team, you know, didn't have to, could have gone after a bit of money at the SA20 and still isn't followed up with a contract. Do you have any logical explanation for what Cricket South Africa are doing in this decision? Like, what what is this? Because uh, the whole of South African cricket fan base is outraged, essentially. So can I start my rant now? Eh? Can we just get it over and done with now? Yes, do it. Okay. Right. CSA a year ago promised us dual contract system. White ball, yes. red ball. All this yes. talk about how we need to understand the new environment of cricket, the new landscape, the fact that there are going to be specialist white ball players, specialist red ball players, and we have to adapt to the times. We have to see how do we retain players who are only going to play one format? How do we make sure that we've still got a good test team? Well, over a year ago it was mentioned, we've now reduced the number of contracts we've given, and they're just still centrally contracted. Why? I mean, first of all, what, we're not surprised because this is a CSA. I look Nokia, who I think was two seasons ago, won SA Player of the Year, doesn't receive a contract, and we and and we have to find out by an exclusive interview. Obviously, when a couple of journalists started missing, you know, saying what's going on, why he wasn't given a contract, and you know, the explanation comes that uh, he has opted to focus on some T20s for the for the time being, with a view to start playing for Slavko once again towards the end of the year. Young fan, he wants to maximize his revenue. Cool, 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 whatever. One liner in the press release would have done that. David Bellingham goes over, scores 100, looks, he is a shoe in, in the test team. Yeah, he walks Had, in. He, he's, he's one of the first names on the, on, on, yes. on the starting 11. So if you were doing <laughs> white ball and red ball contracts, he would have a red ball contract. If you're doing white ball and red ball contracts, 
Quinton de Kock would have a T20 contract if he's still planning on playing in the World Cup, for example, uh, and stuff like that. You know how? Yeah, but I mean, there are so many players in that squad. Right, everybody, and welcome to uh, Premier Rugby on Fair Sports for the final SA match of the weekend. We've just seen the Lions go down to the Ospreys, a very frustrating game that it was. But now it is time for the four champions of this competition, the Stormers, to take on Ulster, featuring a former Stormers captain, Stephen Kitsop, starting against his former side in uh, what is said to be a pretty impressive, uh, well, I think a pretty impressive game, in waiting, hopefully, lots of very impressive players. As the Jim Adam on his head says, stay cool. He's running out for his 50th Stormers appearance. A big occasion for him. Expect a big game out of him. He's back in the number seven jersey, um, uh, which he's sort of defaulted back to with Evan Woods getting back into the start. Um, before we just have a bunch of kick off, let's go through the teams very quickly. In the Stormers, it is Brock Harris, Joseph Dweb, and Nathalie Bashir in the front row. So I'm right, captain the side next to Ruben van Heerden. Vinny Edelbert, Tachiba Daimani, Evan Ruth, uh, the back three there. And you then got Paul DeBet next to Mike Liebach, Leon Zass, Slayman Hartzenberg, Warwick Hallant, the uh, back three. Daniel Duplessis at outside centre. Damien Willemser at 12. Uh, which is good to see. Oh, that's my favorite. I really like seeing there. We have Kiko, by the way. It's a good take there coming from, I think that is the Slayman Hartzenberg. So nice start to him. Evan Lewis gets his first carry of the day. Looking to be held up by Rob Herring, uh, who will go to the Ulster side in just a bit. Off the bench, though, for Stormers, it will be JJ Costa, Neil Leon Lyons, Franz Mahova, RJ Smith, Ben Jason Dixon, Master Tennyson, Hirsch Yankees, and Ben Loder in a 6 2 split. The ball has been turned over here by Ulster by the way, and it falls as far as uh, Nathan Doak, who's playing the number 10 jersey, usually plays at scrum half. But uh, John Cooney will be partnering with him today, so two scrums really on the park here, doing a bit of a snare in the Humber there. A bit of a show and go, they came from Mike Lowry, the, the Ulster fullback. As soon as you get a break of play, we'll go look at the, the who's uh, representing the men in white. Nice slick hands here, Nathan Doak drawing the men there. Good hands here, good hands. Pull back inside. No, oh, excuse me, and Robert Balakun has just come short. Sort of carry there. Alston also really on the front foot early on. Yeah, nice big carry going from Maxi Rear. Watch out for Nick Timoney, by the way, in the number eight jersey. One of my favorite players in this outside. David McCann, though, this time. Shogs with one, has another go. Seven phases so far here from Ulster. And uh, John Cooney really sort of digging for that ball. Now it goes to Stephen Kitsoff. Runs into his former teammates. Bounced off two of them. Has another go to Stephen Kitsoff. Warm reception for him early, I'm sure. Oh, I'll tell you what. If you played that pass there, uh, Shumaklaski, I think uh, could have been interesting. But uh, nine phases now for Alistair. Really good start this from the away side. Now I'll keep it nice and short. There goes uh, Harry Sheridan. Cooney now to Doak. Doak, and it's through the hands to Dan Dubassi. Turn over ball. Yeah, Dan Dubassi. Bit of space. Goes to the kick. Has been charged down. David Willems are after this. So, so is Dan Dupassi. Not sure if there's a knock on there. I think Ethan McElroy has come away with this. He has indeed. Now on the left-hand side, Sheridan. Not too many options. Goes himself. Gets his hands to the tackle. Then gives it away to Tom O'Toole. Gets past the team. He's line on the left-hand side. They're back down the right-hand side. They go. This time it's Kieran Treadwell. So, not too many options. He's hit hard in the tackle there. Joseph Dreber driving him back. From a tool now. Or behind the lines. Lost a bit of advantage here, I have, uh, have Alston in terms of the field position. And as a result, Mark Lowry decided to go to the boot, but he's kicked it into touch, directly into touch, I think. Or well, not, actually. I thought uh, from the way it panned out quickly, it kicked it directly into touch, but apparently it did bounce before. So in the end, it's a nice kick there. Uh, let's go to the other side, shall we? In the first uh, front row, it is Stephen Kitsoff, Rob Herring, and Tom O'Toole, backed up by Harry Sheridan and Kieran Treadwell. The loose trio. Uh, I think he's a reflection of Paul DeVette. That's why it's uh, a, it'll be an Ulster ball, in fact. Uh, Matty Rhea, David McCann, Nick Timoney, the back row there. John Cooney, as mentioned, partnering Nathan Doak. Ethan McRoy, Rob Adekun, and Mike Lowry, the back three. Sean McCloskey is joined by James Hume in the centre. So first throw of the night for Rob Herring. And he goes towards the back to Kieran Treadwell. That's a nice take from him. Pass it down to Nick Timoney. And eventually we'll get back towards Rob Herring. And once is the call there from the referee. Not too much ascendancy so far here from Ulster. Edging forward. It's inside of 22 here. Could you looking to move it, move it now? He's going to move towards the right-hand side. McCloskey pops it up to Doe. Pops it up. And uh, it's really good work there from Leon Zass. But there's a knock-on. Now Lowry looking to try and uh, counter-attack. Looking to get around Mike Leibach. 
who's uh, sporting a, uh, a headband today. Well, a bit of a, a bit of tape around the back there. Chip over the top, yeah. Well, Lunt's going to have to go back and fetch. And a bit of pressure. Fires back towards Suleiman Hartsenberg. He's got a bit of time. Goes to the boot as the youngster. And all the way back is... Uh, I think it looks like... Uh, I think that's McElroy that's got away back. That's a really good kick from him, whoever it is. No, James Hume, actually. He's gone back. He had to go all the way back there. Looks a decent crowd in there at uh, the DHL Stadium. Expect a pretty high-octane game. This also coming up with a loss against the Sharks. And a big result this... Uh, either way, whatever result today is in terms of the table, you've got Stormers who are currently sitting... In sixth position, a win for Ulster would actually take them ahead of the Stormers, bump Stormers down to seventh. And it's a pretty poor line up there. Rob Herring's come away with it, runs straight towards Monty Debock, who's up to the challenge. Quick ball, yeah, for Ulster. Goody whips it to Doak. Doak looking at options, delays the pass, then decides to go to Stuart McCloskey. Now Doak, ball over the top, took it through the hands. Coon, better Coon going. To the boot, they go to James Hume, and Sol Murat comes away with it, goes to Warwick Lant. Warwick Lant sees a bit of space down that right-hand side. And I think it's James Hume once again who is uh, gone back. Fires out towards McCloskey, on the bounce to him. A bit messy at the moment, Jeff, from both teams. A bit more structure coming in now. Treadwell rides the hit, pops it up to his block partner, Sheridan, who's brought down by Ruben van Heeren. It could be a little bit too long. In fact, it's just outside of 22. But it doesn't get marked by Marty Leibach. Good kick that from, I think it was uh, Nathan Doak. Uh, Left-hand side. Nearly Mishia, his first carry of the day. Got the nod ahead of France Mohova. Apparently, that was always pre-planned. So he'll be scrubbing up against Stephen Kitsoff when we do have our first scrum. Going to the boot chairs, Paul DeVette. Nope, goes to the left-hand side of Marty Leibach. He goes to the boot, though. And Leon Zass right against the touchline there. It stays in. It was a great take from Daniel Bissou. He pops it up towards Evan Ruiz. Throws it back to Warwick Lant. Warwick Lant thought about the kick. Decided to go to Mike Ebok. He does go to the boot. Well fielded in the end there. Well, Austin, I think it's uh, John Cooney. He's going to lift it up in the end. And he's going to chase himself. McRoy not too interested. Lant under no pressure. Pops it towards Mike Ebok. Mike Ebok goes to on the right-hand side. Slam and Hartzenberg. Brought down by Stephen Kitsoff. Rob Herring trying to hold him up, but he manages to get his knee to the ground. Brock has first here. Pops up to Leibach. Leibach long pass onto the bounce. Goes behind Warwick Hollant. I said, very sloppy from both these teams at the moment. Accuracy has not been great. Long pass out towards Dan DBC. This has been a vibe seven minutes. Zero structure. He hasn't found touch yet. So Rob Balakun is going to give it into Mike Lowry. Lowry's a nice player. Got a nice good counter-attack about him. Looks to find space. Pops it to Balakun. Goes back inside. Well picked up in the end by David McCann. Now the left-hand side, Jeff. First receiver is Karen Treadwell. Pops up to Doak. Doak goes flat. And it's a great line being run by Nick Timoney, who's going to go under the poles. What a stop that is from Ulster. Brilliant stuff from the away side. It was very much broken play. And uh, what a line he's run. And Nathan Doak just delaying the pass slightly to get him into that gap. But Nick Timoney's gone straight over. And that's, what a perfect start that is from the away side. Storm is a little bit shell shocked, I think. But what a start that is. Great pass. Let's do it coming on the inside there. Chiba Damani, a little bit wide. Straight into the gap. John Cooney will have the kicking duty. It's very interesting man to follow on uh, on Twitter, by the way, and social media in general. There's a lot of uh, threads and uh, posts about kicking and kicking technique and drills and stuff like that. A man who works really, really hard on his goal kicking. And there he goes, adds the extras, and also take a seven points to the lead within the first 10 minutes. 
And a very exciting first 10 minutes it was. Yeah, as I said, not much structure. Kind of just vibes and vibes and vibes. Right, my new block now with the restart. I imagine we'll go down the right hand side, judging by where his forwards are. And Lowry's been replaced, by the way. So, um, Stuart Moore's come on. I assume it's an HIA. Oh, it's a horrible kickoff for my new block. Completely gets that wrong. It'll be a scrum on the five meter line. Wanted to go on the left hand side. It's a complete miskick, if, to be perfectly honest. But the only way really to uh, describe it. There'll be a scrum on the halfway here for Ulster. First scrum of the day. All right, there we go. First scrum. Let's see what uh, who's who's got what in there. Arsenal, oh, pretty solid scrum there. Nothing too much, uh, much gear. Nearly for sure, actually having a bit of a shove on team and kids up, but they do use it to uh, Ulster and uh, Human spinning out of the tackle. It's the name of Hartsburg. Still going. It's you ball back inside. Hartsburg managed to get a finger to it, knocked it backwards. The Stormers do have possession. Interesting first scrum that though. Available now for Paul Devet. Tester here for um, Moore. His first intervention of the game. So under the high ball there. Been taking his time. You're waiting for a few players to get back. Pops up Stephen Kitsov. Now, Cooney goes to the boot himself. Pretty deep, though. Liebach takes it well. Falls into the path of Nick Timoney. In fact, I think he's lost the ball forward here, yeah, has the mighty box. Could be turned over boy here yeah, for us to can recycle. They can't, so it will be a scrum. And Stormers not pitched up so far. Looking pretty sloppy, to be perfectly honest. Oh, it's an opportunity for now for Stephen Goodsell to really have a go at the for sure. There's two cages in it, eh? Ulster just two cages here. We have both of them sitting about 910 kgs, also 912. So two pretty big packs. As we all know, it's all about technique. Nothing to do with the weight, it's about technique. Timmy comes with the back and uh, gets away from Paul Devet, but uh, the cut out comes from uh, Billy Engelbrecht playing the number six jersey today. Uh, it's a really nice ball to show more, but he gets tackled as he takes it and he does knock it on. Turn over boy here for Stormers. Mighty Buck goes to the boot. And he's turned. It's actually very well done in the end by Stuart McCloskey. Oh, did he leave his 22 there? I don't think so. The call he almost did. Then he stepped back. Not the best kick coming from the inside center. So Storm is the first time really with an opportunity with bad possession inside Ulster territory and coming in the 14th minute. Not been the start of the home side and Dom Dobson would have liked.
Right, Joseph Drebo. His first line was a bit sketchy. Let's see how he does with second. Joseph Vinny Hidden, that's a very nice line. We've got to get well and uh, look at a bit of a run at the moor, yeah. So Vinny made a few yards, yeah, have Stormers. They have a McCann being told to move away as well. But it's made a rear, in fact, he was told to move. And Turbo Borkmaster. Well, I'll tell you what, they're winning all the small battles here on the Irish uh, team. First real opportunity for the Stormers there. They managed to turn the ball over, so not been particularly accurate so far. Have uh, the men in blue. Season scrub that monster. And they go to Stuart McCloskey. Puts his head down. Mighty Bark eventually bring him down, but he managed to get the off blown away and it's been turned over. So even Ruth comes away with it. Oh, that's a big tackle that on Leon and Zas. And ball comes on the ground. Paul DeVette has to dive on it. It's messy boy here from the Stormers and slightly isolated. Rob Gallicoon gets on the ball. Ball's available though, so it's a turnover. Referee says nothing. I think there were a couple of the knock-ons there. I think it'll be Alistair Ball, we might guess. First initial knock-on, yeah, from the Stormers, I believe. Was it, in fact, for, for the Stormers? No, it will be a Stormers scrum. For the scrum penalty, yeah, storms, but a big second shot yeah, from Ulster, so they have a reset here. Yeah. Not not given the two scrums, yeah, they've been pretty easy actually. That's another reset here. Yeah? Okay, so Mike Lowry has failed at HIA, by the way. So Stuart Moore will play the full length of the game. Not ideal for Master. Mike Lowry is a very important player for them. Nice kind of attacking fullback. Plenty of pace. Good vision. Another reset scrum, yeah, as you approach 20 minute mark. Not very impressed looking John Dobson, which is not surprised given how badly they've started yet, yeah, but uh, not plenty of rugby still to play. Still the Lions not stopped particularly well and still managed to almost mount a bit of a comeback, so uh, still plenty. No, no need to uh, panic just yet. 
this time. Apparently, they came from the Stormers. Good work that from them. They'll enjoy that. I think it's on Brock Harris's side. And soon time of Mighty Buck. I think he's going to take the points here. He has, he has the little DHL buggy. does arrive. Right in front of the poles, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I think that's a good decision, to be fair. I think they've really not really been in the game. Um, so I think taking the points, getting the points going is probably a good idea because they'll kind of feel a bit of a robbery of these points, actually, because they've not, not really deserved them. Right, uh, Mighty Buck, who's uh, kicking, has always kind of got a lot of scrutiny. And, um, yeah, they sort of sorted things out. So, but it was, the, it was the highest point scorer in the URC in that first season when they did win. So we know he can do it. And uh, head down, that's coming towards the left, though. I think that'll shave down the left-hand side. Yeah, so he's missed out on that one. Pretty poor from him, I must be honest. It's right in front of the poles. You've got to be nailing that. I'll tell you what, I was watching some of the schoolboys today, and some of them can really, really kill for tea. Very exciting players coming off through the through the system. But uh, so the score remains zero for Stormers. Ulster still with their seven points. They'll have a restart at the 22. Nathan Doak with ball in hand. He's nice and low. Eventually forced to work Lunt. Warwick Lunt will survey his options. I think he's going to go to the boot. No, he wants to run. It goes to the... The grabber through for Leon and Zass, but it's well read by Stuart Moore, who's then stood on the touchline. And you see, thought about taking quickly. He does take it quickly. I'm not sure it's the right option. Goes to Mike Goes to Aaron Billimser. Billimser's first touch. Spins away from one. Steps away from another. Still goes to Aaron Billimser, playing in that Red Bull sleeve of his since he, since he got that uh, sponsorship. Now sporting the sleeve. Penalty advantage here for the Stormers. Thought about taking quickly. Yeah, did uh, Paul Duvet. Who ever wants to think he probably take the three points again. They down your day in Vimsa, which will be uh, worrying signs of John Dobson. I mean, if we were to look at probably the Storm's best player, I think it was Dave Vimsa. I don't think there are too many players. Maybe most, not, maybe not the most important player. I mean, maybe Molly Nebuch, arguably more important in terms of not being as replaceable. Dan Dubassi, for me, a uh, very good player at uh, 12. You're working at 15. But the best player without a shadow of a doubt for me is Dave Vimsa in the Storm's side. I think he's got World Player of the Year written all over him. That is how much I rate him. Right, decision time here. He's uh, getting some checks on his face here, Danny Williams, sir. Another opportunity for the Mighty Buck to get the points going. All right, one more time yet is Mighty Buck. And he's hooked it again. Same thing. Down the left-hand side. That's six points he's left now out on the tee. So not a good start here for Molly Nebuck. Very frustrating for Stormers fans. With uh, just over 17 minutes left on the clock. Yes, Ulster still with a seven-point lead. Oh, cheap as me, I tell you what. That's a massive hit. He's been hammered, has Dan Duplessis. 
But, uh, and now it's a good kick in behind, but it's well read by Barbada Cooney. He's turned the ball over, so I'll step back with possession. Manny Rea puts his head down, gets driven back by Salman Murat and Billy Engelbrecht. Two good tacklers. But conceding the penalty there, Stormers. Uh, look at this. Uh, hit and Dan do see it was so well timed by um, I think it was um, David McCann. Just timed it so well as Dan do came down, just bang. Hmm. Oh, cheap as me. Right, so further up the field, got our third opportunity now to try and uh, improve on their first try. They go to the front of the line. It's a good take there from David McCann. Nick Simony thought about going to the line side, then he breaks down the, the right hand side, driven back by uh, Evan Ruiz and Rim Van Heerden, but available yet for Ulster. Go to Kieran Treadwell, mid hard in the tackle. And I'll turn a half pass. Jim McCloskey's done very well to hold on to that, and he's managed to get his knees onto the ground, so they will have to release him. Ball still available there for Ulster. Now, left hand side goes Doak. James Hume now runs into the very big Ruben van Heerden. Not too much remains from Ulster. They go to Stephen Kitts off. He pops it up to uh, Sheridan. It was well read by Billy Engelbrecht. McCloskey. Pop up the line. Oh, that's a great take from Chad. Well, and it's a good offload. Balakoon comes inside. Yeah, I think it's a Nick Timoney. It's still Nick Timoney. Just short of 22. He's already got one try as the big number eight. McElroy showing go. Now Stephen Kitzel goes the direct route there. Makes it available for John Cooney. Nathan Doak goes short to McCluskey. Pops the ball up to Abbott Cooney. Comes in looking for work. Good tackle that from Brock Harris. Taking a while to get this ball back. The penalty advantage, Brock Harris. Penalized for not running away. Doak, flat and forward to James Hume. Hume, who I think might have had the pace to go down the short side. But uh, no running away. They'll go back for the penalty. Decision time now for Alster. Very much kickable. Three points very much on the cards here. But uh, could go to the corner here and ride the bit of momentum. That's right in front of the pole. So uh, they have decided to take the points. Stephen Kitzel, I think, is going to be massive for Ulster tonight. Just he knows the Stormers game plan, knows the players, knows the coaching staff, knows the crowd, knows the conditions. If you ever wants to have a spy into the Stormers camp, I don't think you get much better than Stephen Kitzel. He was such a big part of their success a few seasons ago. Been very, very impressive I've seen you so far from Ulster. Now, uh, John Cooney lines up a second attempt of the day. Pretty straightforward. Oh, it's off the, it's off the poles. Let me say that. So both uh, kickers having a bit of a nightmare in the last 10 minutes. That's a big getaway, get out of jail free card there from the Storm. It should never, ever be missing from there. Especially somebody as reliable as John Cooney. He's got such a good um, kicking percentage. It almost looked like he just didn't take it seriously enough. I kind of just try to chip in and just gets it completely wrong there, does the scrub off. Never seen that before. Rob Herring, I think it's a good thing I throw it into the Franks. I think if I had gone any further, it might have been skew. So I carry that from uh, Matty Rear. Rob Herring, good hands. There's Nathan Doke, long pass out towards McElroy. He's got space now. He's going to chip and chase. Oh, I tell you what, that could be a 50-22.
Where did it originate? Where did it originate? No, I think it might have originated from the Stormers. That's uh, also the line, which could have been inside Stormers territory. You have to go all the way back here. It's a great kick. And I think eventually the 522 has been awarded. That's a brilliant, 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 brilliant kick that from uh, McElroy. And that's how you just buy opportunities. Win prediction right now sitting at 58% for Ulster. 12 minutes to go in that first half. Uh, the Ulster coach staff on their feet. Right, Rob Herring with ball in hand. The veteran hooker. Here in trade while the expected target. Now they're going to go back. To... Oh, I'll tell you what. Uh, he's been completely taken out there. I'm very surprised. I think Joseph Weber has actually impeded the man trying to go up there. Very surprised also haven't been awarded a penalty here. I mean, look at this here. How he's not been penalized there, who knows? So it should be a penalty, surely. He's just gone and told him. I assume this is it's a skew throw, and that's but I mean is is there's not a penalizable offense. So surely a penalty outweighs a uh what is essentially a free kick so the team are having a check here i think should it be a penalty i mean i understand that the first offense is a skew throw but it's surely a penalty then outweighs the skew throw and it's not well, I suppose it's only if it's considered a power play. So not considered a power play. So I think he gets away with that one, does Joseph Weber. It will be a scrum for the Stormers. All right, so scrum here for the Stormers on uh, just uh, about 10 meters out from their try line as we tick towards the half an hour mark. And Brock Harris wins the penalty. That's a huge, huge scrum coming from him. And I'll tell you what, Stephen Kitsov in front of Nifty Bashir, I think is a reasonable battle. But I think Brock Harris very much has <coughs> the measure of uh, Tom O'Toole. Now, I think Nifty Bashir is just uh, anchoring, really. And I'm only going to look to find touch, and we'll find touch. I think it's somewhere between the 10 meter and the halfway line. No, it's more towards the 10 meter line. Yeah, very good work there from Brock Harris. Still doing it, Ab. Still doing it. The right apology. I think he's 37 or 38. I think 37 is where I'd go. 39. I think it all back. Yeah, 39 years old. What a lad. Terrible pass that for Engelbert. Good pick up that from Dan Dubassie. He's about looking for options. Finds Ruben Van Heer and runs into uh, Stephen Kitzel. He's trying to hit the ball in the tackle. Now Paul DeBeck goes to the boots. Damon Hartsburg gives chase. And uh, it's gone backwards off of uh, McElroy, but has fallen back towards Ulster. Back inside their own half of the 10 meter line on the left hand side. A right, long pass out there. Back away, looking for options. Goes over the top to Rob Balakou. A bit of space ahead of him. Cuts inside. Gives the ball to James Hume. That's a very good line being run. Looking for support is James Hume. None really coming. Cooney is there for quick ball. Goes to Doak. Up quickly there was Evan Ruiz. Rob Herring did well to take it himself. Now Doak looking for options. Very much the rush defense here from the Stormers. 
More caught on it. Let him do not too many options. Decides to go to the boot, and I think that will surely go into touch. Oh, that's never mind. Oh, it's bounced inside, unfortunately, for him. It was a great kick. And Hilal and Zas will go to the boot. And uh, it'll be an Ulster line -out. It was a great kick from Nathan Doak. He hung it right up in the air. Inside ball, Rob Balakun. Tell you what, else they're doing all the attacking here. Yeah? I think we've got half time with just seven points. I think Storms would be the happy one, actually, to be honest. I think Ulster should be well ahead, yeah. Rush defense, and that's uh, forced the knock on. I suppose that is what the, the rush defense does do. Forces the error, but I think if James Hume had taken that, then it could have been interesting. But uh, yeah, Storms rush defense has been quite a couple of times, but when it works, it's pretty... it's pretty effective. And you can just see they're not rushing the pass. They're not a great pass to James Hume. Had it been a better one, then I think life could have been interesting for the Stormers. But it'll be a scrum for the Stormers, who are still remain pointless after 33 and a half minutes. Sixty-eight possession for sixty-eight possession there for Ulster. That's a lot. In 34 minutes, that's a lot. As the Mexican wave rolls around uh, the DHL Stadium. Oh, sorry, the scrum. Nice. Storm's got the second shove. Bit of a second shove now from Ulster, though. Needs to use it as Evan Rose. Yeah, penalty comes from Ulster. And yeah, uh, words be shared there between Kitsoff and the Anthony Michelle. That's going to be a really, really fun one to watch. And Anthony Michelle's going to go and have a chat there. Could potentially be my teammates if Anthony Michelle continues with Path. Wasn't invited to the alignment camp. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the points here. I'll serve it for less than five minutes on the clock. The initial shove comes here from the Stormers. They ride into the Ulster and then bang, the counter shove. Yeah, a bit of a smile there from Stephen Kitsoff to Nedlin Bashir, chatting about where that penalty came from. That's a much better kick there from John Cooney. Oh, never mind. He's missed it. I thought it looked pretty good. It snuck down the left-hand side. That's really, really weird. So that's six points apiece missed by both sides. It could very well be sitting at 13 points to six. I don't know if it's really difficult kicking condition. It doesn't seem to be that windy. But uh, tell you what, both teams have been really, really poor off the tee. One from three for Ulster, zero from two for Stormers. Now on the right-hand side goes Martin Ebok. Mackerel underneath it. 
Okay, Cameron chase there from uh, Sinema Hartsburg. Right, back in the halfway line, go Ulster. Just over th uh, two and a half minutes left on the clock. Very, very close game. Despite the dominance, it must be said from Ulster. So Storm is holding on defensively. Uh, I suppose you can't really continue. Oh, it's a great take from Opel. Oh, just trying to get the offload away, but uh, locking it on in the process. And that's kind of been the, the, the case for Ulster. They had some really good moments. And just that last pass, last moment just not quite fallen to hand and if they do, if they start to then i think storm is I mean, it's a great take from our battery and you can just see him freeing up his arms and uh slamming the hearts totally on zas just knocking his hand as he's trying to make the offload he would say he came off uh a stormer's hand Right, so Storm is scrum here. Yeah? We're 96 left on the clock in the first half. Keeping it in there. Looking for the second shot. Not going to count. Paul DeBet's going to have to use it. Eventually does. Goes to Mighty Bob. Mighty Bob looking to overlap. Daniel BC. He's got Leon Zass on the outside. So he has to go to Warwick Land. Warwick Land. A little bit forward. hartsonburg has got a bit spaced on the right hand side. Might have to go back and check that pass. It's done very well to keep that inside, but Paul DeVets then lost it. No, put it backwards. Oh, this is great handling. What the hell? Step there from Damien Billimser. Step back inside from Damien Billimser. Stop it. Now he's lost the possession. And I think a knock on there from Ulster. I'll tell you what. I think this, this is what Stuart McCloskey might be asking. I think if you go back to that earlier pass, I think there was a knock on there from, uh, from uh, Storm. Well, forward pass from Ulster, but that's some great handling from Stormers. And it was uh, Matty Rea who the ball bounced by his feet, couldn't manage, but look at this for David. Step outside of one, then bang, shifts inside of John Cooney. Gets away from well, Stuart Moore makes the tackle, and then the ball comes loose, and then yeah, just gets knocked back and then forward off the hands of Matty Rea, which will result in a scrum for uh, the Stormers. Right, well, it's, the clock has turned red. So that'll be the first half after this. The question is, can Stormers find a penalty? Maybe go to the corner, try to find some points. They take the three. Uh, it's not been a great half from the Stormers. Very much been chasing the game. So to go only go down seven points to nil down at half time will probably be quite a bit of a mild victory, actually, because they'll know they haven't been good. Ball available for Evan Rose. Pops it up towards uh, Paul DeVette. A little bit of pressure there. Pops it up to uh, Simon Hartzenberg. He's slightly isolated, but if the support does arrive, now Paul DeVette goes to Ruben van Heerden. Haven't seen him carry too much. Big lock. Now DeVette goes to Lebock. Lebock goes short, and it's locked on. And that will be the half. Right, half-time score. Seven points to nil over the DHL Stadium. Storm has not been good. Pretty woeful. If we're going to be brutally honest, and um, but uh, in the same breath, I suppose, after not being clinical, um, both teams have missed six points off the tee, so things could have been a bit different. But at the moment, the game very much in the balance, despite Ulster very much being the dominant side, not being able to capitalize as much as they would have liked to. Um, but y'all don't go away, we're gonna have a bit of a break, and we'll see you guys just after for the second half. Hello and welcome everybody to Between Two Fans where you're joined by myself and Steve and we are going to be covering all things sports over the last week. We're talking URC rugby, we're talking international breaks, I'm trying to sound excited by international breaks. Yeah, I know, what a we're waste talking time. talking cricketing selection, F1, MotoGP, um, the IPL's just started. Stevie, there's a, not as much going on. But it seems like it's developing into um, into a new season of sport. But first of all, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine, fine. Things are a little bit cooler this side. Um, with the heatwave season, we've done a little bit. So we're appreciating that. And uh, 
Yeah, good weekend of, of South African sport. Um, so can't complain. Can't complain, Skull team. Yeah. Can never complain with, with South African teams doing well, particularly in the URC. Um, Stevie, let's get into... This is becoming a very um, somber part of the show for me, the, this prediction show um, yeah. that we do. And week on week, predict three sporting matches between Steve and I and see who comes out on top. And it hasn't been good. Um, coming into this week, I was losing um, 5-2. Um, mm. So really, really scrambling. Um, and we, we went for three three um, rugby predictions. Um, so the first one being um, Connacht versus Lions. Um, where, I mean, Lions essentially out of out of nowhere, having received a red card, went to a place where no other South African team, I don't think, has won yet in, in Galway and managed to get a 38-14 win. Stevie, mm-hmm. my prediction was Conoff by five. Your prediction was Lions by five. So, I mean, both of us way off, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think even the Lions sitting in the change room afterwards going, sheesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? Where did that come from? That's a, that's a boys. Yeah, yeah Slava Kanye, you should go off more often, bro. Yeah, back it off, um, David. Good bet was there. <laughs> but, uh, so that, that's a 1-0 no lead. Match two was Stormers versus Edinburgh where it's a real shame and and it's because I went so conservative because I thought you wouldn't have faith in my boys, but just I went Stormers by 10, you went Stormers by 14. I mean, saying Stormers by 10 at home, it's just that was, that was criminal from me. Stormers mm. winning that game, 43 points to 21. So, again, comfortable, comfortable win. And then Sharks versus Ulster. We both went to Ulster. I said by <laughs> six, you said by yeah. 10. Um, and Sharks won by 10, um, 22 points to 12. So, Stevie, another one. It's 6 2. You no, know, the week it, of that, uh, I'm starting <laughs> to feel like Leinster over here, dude. Well, in, in, in the race to in the race to 10, I think I think I, I've still got a I've got a little bit of leeway, but I need to start stepping on it now. Mm. Um, if you if you less there's anything to go by, you'll choke at the at the final, <laughs> at the final hurdle, yeah. No, what, is it, what, what is this last round wins? <laughs> It's always last round. Bro. That, that's yeah. how this works. Um, but Stevie, before we get into the URC fixtures, do you watch Chasing the Sun this weekend? I did. I did. Um, I mean, we all know how. I mean, it's 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 one of those, isn't it? Um, you know, every single horse train is going to be tagged and uh, you know takes you straight back. I'm actually really looking forward to this coming weekend because no, the I first know. weekend of the of, of the World Cup um, I obviously cut it from here but moving forward now it'll be the stuff from when I was actually in France um, so it's going to be like a nice little trip to memory lane all the press conferences and stuff that they show and like the trainings and the matches and stuff like that I'll have actually been over there so it's going to be a nice little little throwback um, you, you're hoping for a little a little sneak peek in the background there or is there some information we don't know are you going to see Stevie yeah. underneath <laughs> that, 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 that under that the camera no, yeah, unfortunately you, didn't didn't get the call up this season, but uh, one one oh, day didn't get I mean, the call that is, up. That is a any rugby um, broadcaster's dream, right? To make but, just to make uh, a chasing the sun. Hopefully, hopefully we'll see. And and when we, we yeah when we do when we do the three peat, um, then 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 you'll, then you'll see Steve there. Uh, can I label it an early criticism? Yes. And I'm a bit worried about whether this is just for the first game or whether it's going to be for all the game. But the lack of um, coaches' mics. During the first game, for me, it was a what, big not, not hearing. Not being able to, yes, because because we had we heard well, we heard we didn't hear anything. We just saw the reactions. Yeah. Um, but in the first one, we heard you know them actually speaking about what's going on during the game, and for me, that yeah. was like the biggest insight for me of the entire thing. Like the halftime talks, obviously, are big, but I really enjoyed watching the during the game reactions, the yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm hoping it was just a one sort game because if there's none of that, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. Yeah, I think also, in, particularly for that England game, I want to hear what was mm. going on. Yeah. Well, all, I mean, all three games, you think about the one point in it, you know, the, yeah. the big calls right. on the, on the scrum yeah. and stuff like that. The, yeah. the tension of those, I just really want to hear what was being said it, at it the could time. Be, it could be maybe actually too much insight, to be fair, because it's largely the same coaching staff. Um, but, I mean, it's chasing the sun. It's 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 just... It's phenomenal to watch. It's never going to have the same like story arc as the last one, where we really yeah. started at rock bottom and came, came world champions. Like that was like you know written in heaven, and now it's like well, 
we were one of the favorite yeah, sure. teams. They tried, they tried, they, they tried to create that. You know, obviously we had that end of your tour, which wasn't too great, and they sort of tried to create that narrative that we had, you know, fallen off a little bit. That you know, we were, yeah. thing, but we were like guys. We were always within the top three to four sides going yeah. to the World Cup. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was never, yeah. we were never underdogs in that World Cup. Yeah, but. No, it's it, it's great. Love it. I I had to scramble and chase to manage myself to get like a VPN to watch this side of the world, but had to be done. But Stevie, let's yeah. get into the UFC. Yeah, well, four out of four, isn't it? Uh, so we saw Sharks kicking things off this weekend, 20 <laughs> points to 12 victory. A lot of questions asked. Is them that being back? Uh, Stormers, very um, comfortably beating Edinburgh. Had a good season so far at home. So Stormers very much, as uh, Dom Dobson was mentioning earlier, do a dark time the season, important victory. Lions with an emphatic victory. I mean, I think that probably the the, the result of the weekend, especially going down to 14 men and yet running in went to final. I think the last time I, a, any South African team won that, I think was the Springboks back in like 2008. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so it shows you how dominant uh, and and Lion Tides in general have been over us in that part of the world. And then Bulls, 31 points to 10 victory over Dragons. Uh, I mean, comprehensive. Could have been probably been big, a, bit, uh, a bit more, but... Um, They've set up a very nice clash against the to this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I mean, I suppose you start with the Sharks. Uh, is them is the, have they turned a corner, or do you think this might be a bit of an anomaly result? I I do think they've um, turned a corner. I think. I mean, we saw how good, how dominant their forward pack was. I mean, they're literally bringing off a bomb squad, or bringing on rather a bomb squad of box. Like, yeah. I feel like there's only so they they they've like. Plugged away at the same tactic, just recruit Springboks, recruit Springboks, recruit uh, Springbok, and I feel like that could only go on for so long without it working. So I do feel like it's slowly, it's slowly um, starting to tick, particularly in their forward pack. Um, and now it's just a kind of I think about the backs now catching up. But um, you know, an Ulster team that's that's doing well in the URC. Um, so I, no, I, I was impressed and and. I, I think it'll be a good test again this weekend versus Edinburgh. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the front row is a big thing, and and John Club she was moaning a few weeks ago about the fact he hasn't been able to select his his best side, and he was saying that for the first time this season he's been able to select his best side, and I think it did show. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, the, the Sharks have always relied so much on that scrum um, for for that sort of set piece dominance, and when you've got Oxen Chair, Vincent Koch, you know, Bongi Benambi as your front row. You know, that's that's yeah. what you mentioned the Kuni was days and then Stuka and all that adding Chevin Yukani to the mix next season. Um, and so uh, it's it's a bit childish. Um but in a team among stars, Ethan Hooker, um uh, a nice and and not a non household name coming away with man of the match. So yeah, interestingly good. enough, you know, I've, I, we've been saying that they've been lacking a a, a good inside center for for a while. This is they're, they're kind of their problem. They announce Andre Estes, and then the next game sure. out, um, Ethan yeah. Hooker goes over as, as a man of the match performance and through. inside center. And he's also he's also he's a big lad. He's sort of, uh, to almost 100 kgs <laughs> and, and about 1.9. So he's a, he's a large, large human. But um, I think it just shows you how much they've missed that that presence in the midfield. Um, so I think a lot of things starting to click into place. Um, too late, Along really. Not backing Barrett and Bosch anymore. <laughs> Yeah, and CM Suku. Yeah, I mean we've been, we've we've only been saying it the entire season. Yeah, yeah. It so, so it's, it's actually it's so good to see him have a stretch of games, and and he's growing into it as well. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see what he continues to do with that jersey, and just um, in the like him as just as one to watch within the like the South African setup in general. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, um, it's far too late for them to do anything in the URC anyway, so we can move right along yeah. because you know they're going to finish maybe twelfth little push. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, but I think I think a very significant result is that Stormers game. I think Stormers have, I mean, they're one point ahead of the Lions, which shows two things. First of all, how good of a season the Lions are having, but I think also how Stormers have not quite been the same team throughout the season that they have been the last two seasons. Um, for me, they looked a lot better recently, um, but I think I mean, you you as a home fan, I reckon this this is the stretch of games where you start proving that they are genuine contenders. And do you feel confident yet, or do you think we still you still got to be relatively a lot of work to do. I think, I mean, all of the South African teams pretty much have a good home stretch of fixtures now. And we love the late surge up the table. Um, if we want any chance of winning or getting close to it, we need it. I think we need to finish in kind of the 
I mean, we fit at the moment. Fourth, I mean, third might be a bit of a, be a bit of a push, um, but not completely out of sight. Um, I just think it it relies so much on us being at home, which which is why yeah. I say I think top three. Then you can maybe there's a chance that uh, that the Bulls and 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 Nets they get knocked out by someone else, and then you get a home final all of a sudden. Um, I think that makes it complete difference, but. I mean, a lot, a lot of, again, a lot of these South African teams had a lot of home games in, in this last kind of um, stretch from um, week kind of 13 to 18, um, like kind of not more than two away fixtures. And essentially that's been the, the Achilles heel of most of most South African teams. Um, you know, Lions getting one out the way. I, 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 so, I mean, to t- just to finish on the Stormers, I think, I think success would be third or fourth. I'm hoping yeah. third. I think third will be very. I'll be very stoked with. I don't think we'll get yeah. to second or first, obviously. Um, but I want to hear from you about about the Lions. What what, what is success for you this season? Top eight. Uh, top, top eight. eight. Just, just top eight. Champions Cup. What well, Champions Cup qualification? I mean, you eighth already. You know. Um, so I think that for me is is the. All right, and we are back for the second half. Storm is currently training us to seven points. And they're pretty torrid, to be perfectly honest, in that first half. And uh, what is quite a decent turnout at the DHL Stadium, I think, will be uh, pretty unimpressed with what they've seen so far. They'll need to see a bit of a response uh, from their side in the second half because, yeah, it was god-awful. I mean, they were just never really in the game. Uh, Ulster, however... Um, will be frustrated because they were very much in the game, dominating the game, dominating all stats, and yet only lead by seven points and only score seven points. Left six points out. They're sort of stormers. Um, so the game is very much in the balance, despite dominance being pretty clearly uh, towards the side uh, wearing white at the moment. Steven Kitsov so far, a bit of a quiet game. A bit, a bit solid. A couple of carries and the one scrum penalty. Um, hasn't really been able to get as much st- stuck into his teammates as he'd probably like to uh, it's a very good kick off there early on there. And uh, Tio Diamond is going to work the oh, inside board. Damien Phillips, this could be the perfect stop, but there was a knock on. Good handling that from Achiba Diamond. What a skill set he has. I still I understand that Rusty Erasmus has you know, talked about the fact he's not maybe the complete player and still needs to work on. But I still look at Achiba Diamond and think there's a spring mock in there. And whether he's not ready or not now, I just don't understand why you don't bring him into the alignment camp and say, right, you're here. With this part of your game, but you're here with this part of the game. Fix this, continue, continue with this, and you could be a spring block. That's all. I, I, I just think that there's value there. I genuinely see him as a potential future spring block. Uh, anyway, here's the lock on for the Stormers. It'll be an early scrum here for Ulster in the first minute of the second half. Welcome to uh, the stream if you're on you. Please just smash the like, by the way. Just 18 likes despite uh, almost 100 people. We've had over 100 people watching most of the game, and yet sitting on 18 likes. So I think it's pretty poor form. Uh, if I'm going to be brutally honest. So uh, please just match like on the video. Let's see if we can get that up to sort of 30, 40 likes maybe by the end of the game. Uh, let's see what the scrum's going to look like over here. John King with both ball in hand here. And it's well hooked there by Ulster. Very much spiraling. And it is a penalty for Ulster. Wheeling the scrum is the call. I think it's against uh, Brock Harris. Well, that's who the referee seems to be talking to. And uh, Brock Harris looking a bit frustrated at the referee. Looking at Chris Fallen as the veteran prop. 39 years of age. Um, set the record actually last year with uh, two props coming against each other. VPNL, the legendary VPNL, up against him at 37 years old. Uh, Brock Harris, 39 years old, a combined age of almost 80, um, was the record for the oldest scrummaging sort of matchup in URC history. And you can just see the initial dominance from Brock Harris, but just wheeling around there and um, a pretty easy penalty to award in the end. Right, so it will be an Ulster line on the halfway line. I'll give Brock Harris maybe about 10 more minutes, and then we'll probably see uh, the likes of uh, uh, Leon Lyons come onto the park. They have a bit of a, a loose at prices at the moment, uh, do the Stormers. We'll see, see when we can see the introduction of uh, France Moher. But anyway, decent line there. Stuart McCloskey uh, runs towards the, the halfway line, and there's a stop well short. Uh, ball available for John Cree, but not quick ball at all. Goes to Nathan Doak. Not too many options. Goes to the boot shed. Doak lifts it high in the air, up towards that right-hand side. Tell you what, he's got that ball on a flipping d- dial. That's a very good run this one from Leon Zass. Slightly lateral, gets it off and away to Fashir. Goes to Brock Harris. Brock Harris shows and goes. Runs into Stephen Kitsoff. Ball to bed on the left hand side to Molly Leebach to uh, Samuel Hartsburg. Skips to Timothy Damani. Damian Billitzer goes to the boot. 
And that's while well, that red barge and assume you get that's gonna need the tackle of Achiro Damani and then gets back up. Uh, good work there on the uh, Stormers defense there. A big hard hit on uh, Sheridan. The slow boy here for uh, John Cunha. I think we'll go to the boot chair. Try and put this ball back inside Stormers territory. He does just that. Test here for Mine Leibach. He copes well. Rob Gattacu's there to make the tackle. A couple of hours the players are there, but uh, it's good breakdown work on the Stormers. Now, we've been here and goes himself. Stormers back um, behind their 10 meter line. Slow boy up. Penalty for the Stormers, though. Not releasing is the call. It's against Matty Rea, the number six for Ulster. So Stormers will have a free exit here. It's not been very accurate either side, to be fair. I mean, Ulster have got the, they got the early try and have had more possession. But uh, accuracy is firmly lacking um, between both sides. If we're going to be all be, if we're all going to be brutally honest. Right, Storm have the 22 an opportunity here for them to try and find their opening points of the game. Goes to Chiu Daimani at the back. It's a good take from him. Penalty advantage for Stormers. Mighty Buck holds on to the ball. And on the right hand side, we we'll go once again. Long pass out towards Suleiman Hotsberg. Goes to the boot. Well read by McElroy. And they'll go back for the penalty. Now, do the Stormers take the points? Do they kick towards the corner? What do they do? A great kick my ebook put them inside the corner there I think the time to get the launcher are the stormers need to make sure they get this one right and they go to everybody here it's a good take popped up to Joseph Dever coming around the corner Joseph Dever that's a barrage and he run by him good momentum Port of now going to Evan Ruiz Good tackle that from uh, Stephen Kitsoff. And he's caused the knock on as well. Big uh, celebration there from Stephen Kitsoff. I don't think the Thomas fans will appreciate that too much, but it shows you how to, what it means to his new team. And it's a huge tackle there. So it'll be a scrum yet for Ulster. They've gone upstairs to check, and they're happy with the tackle on Joseph Dreva. I actually don't think there actually is head contact there. I think it looked like it was initially, but I think there's actually separation. I just think it looks like there's head contact. So I think he sort of moves back as he makes the makes the tackle. Right, yeah, you well, should see if they, they look to try and clear this off the back um, from Nathan Doak, or they look to try and milk the penalty here, the Stormers. Scrums have very much been trading dominance so far. I wouldn't say there's been any clear dominance from one side throughout the game. 
And they have to use a jab. Goes to the right side to Doak. He's in clear from Doak. I've actually been very impressed with him at 10. Usually plays with Doak at 9. But we are seeing more and more players make that transition from uh, 9 to 10. Seeing so, Hammer doing it very successfully at the moment, although he was back at 9 today. All right, Joseph Blair with ball in hand. Almost 10 minutes into the second half. Still no points in the second half here. A bit of a messy now, but Ruben Van Heeren comes away with it. Brings in uh, Leon Zass. Now Sam Murat, former captain. Not really rolling. Was uh, actually, I was to Sam Murat was actually in the way of that. Pulled a bit going on the left hand side. Monty Lebok goes to David Williams. David Williams uh, looks to put that iconic. Uh, Little sort of chip into to the space there. You need to be, he's become quite known for that. David Williams so loves that little grabber in behind. And uh, not very happy with David Williams. So I think calling on his force to, to wake up basically and start to get going. He's going to have to take a bit of a leisure role in the next few years, David Williams. So two time World Cup winner and uh, first one, yeah, obviously sort of playing a couple of games. Uh, I think he only played one actually. Um, but was about 21 years old when he won it, or 20 years old when he won it. Uh, 25 years old now, and uh, turning 26 this year. So I think, you know, he's very much time for him to come into his own. Uh, senior player now on the Stormers side. I think a senior player on the Springboks side. To be fair, I think he, can't, he must be coming up to about 50 caps for, for South Africa. He's got 40, so he could actually get to that this year. Oh, bit of a handling errors there. Bit of a show there from Leland Zass. Somebody could very easily be 100 caps for Springboks, uh, David Willemser. There are 13 games for him to try and play this season. Nedling Bashir, solid work there from him. Storm is still with ball in, uh, ball in hand. Paul Devet, though, caught on the ball, though. So a bit of pressure being lost, and a player all over it. He very surprised he's not awarded. He is rewarded with... That's a good penalty to win, actually. Right, Nathan Doak. Looking to find touch. Does so very well. Messi Gay, I haven't had too much of... I think it's just Kieran Finger. Yeah, it's Kieran Treadwell, based on the, the grimace in his face. Yeah, it was a really good uh, turnover in the end there from Sheridan. Found himself such a good position. I think we had time, yeah? I think we had a bit of a water break. He's having a chat with the two uh, captains there is the referee. Do, 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 do. Now, Karen Treadwell, I think. Oh, here we go. Well, brand new, uh, well, two new front rows. Uh, Andre Perdet de Cots have been about to be brought on here. And there goes Ben Jason Dixon. Is it? Yeah, it is Ben Jason Dixon, no scrum cap. And a man I really, really read is JJ Cotter. I think he's a fantastic hooker. If I was the Lions, I'd be throwing money at him saying, come and start for the Lions. But here comes Franz Malherber, as well as. Uh, Ben Jason Dixon, as well as uh, JJ Kotzer. So some nice players to bring on. Uh, Vidya Engelbrecht will make way for Ben Jason Dixon. I'm a massive Ben Jason Dixon fan. I think that he has got Springbok written all over him. Massive, massive work rate. Uh, tackling, he's tackling Demon. Uh, gets around the park. Nice physicality. He's got, got many years ahead of him to, to really refine his game. Uh, I think he's had a bit of a breakthrough season. Uh, 25 years old. Taking him a bit of a while. Turn 26 next season. So he's not... Uh, He's not like a complete youngster, but uh, I think he's really matured into a really solid player. 
So uh, Master Tennis is apparently on as well. I didn't actually see that one, but uh, have to wait and see. So Brock Harris still in the park there. Ben Jess Dixon comes and joins the line out. Good contact from the Stormers, but and, uh, I think they've actually turned the ball over here. I think it's come off uh, Stormers. I mean, and it has indeed. It's turned over the ball for Stormers. Good work that from them. Good possession back here. Yeah, this will be JJ Cotson's first throw uh, place, uh, and this is where he's very reliable. Um, I think statistically one of the best um, line operators in the competition when he was playing regularly back in that first season. <clears throat> has found game time a bit more harder to get a come by in the last couple of uh, years, but it's just a shame because I really rate him. And first throw is a good one. Go straight to Ben Jason Dixon. Paul Deveco himself. <laughs> Ball available there. Brock Harris. No. In fact, we might need Buck. will come in and scrum off. Good shot. I'll play there from Diamond. Evan Ruins. He's had a very quiet game. Gets ball going away. David Phillips. David Phillips with a space. Long pass out to Morica Lund. On pace there. Gives it to Leon Leland Zass. Leland Zass runs it straight. Good tackle there coming from Moore. Ball available just outside the 22. The Storm is right up against the touchline. Back inside. They go to. Ben Jason Dixon, recycle once again. Paul DeVette now, looking for options. Goes to my knee box, stationary start. Goes to Sal Murat, his captain. Runs into Stephen Kitsop, his former captain. Ball available there. Money knee box. Willem, sir. Willem, sir. Chips over the top there, but it's right into the hands of uh, McElroy, who uh, turns a couple of players, sends them all packing. So not the best kick there from David Willem, sir. Money will have to build from deep. Looking to try and run this, though. He's got options. Goes to Chiba Diamani. He then pops it up towards Ben Jason Dixon. He pops it back towards Warwick Halant. Bit disjointed. Warwick Halant looking for options. Goes to Damon Phillips, who's run a very nice line. Pops it up to Sal Murat, who goes to Molly Lebov. Looking to keep it alive. Now Hartzenberg's found the outside of McCloskey. Hartzenberg puts the hammer down. He's got Paul DeBain inside him. This should surely be a try. What a tackle that is from John Keegan. Pops that back to Hartzenberg. Great support play. Still going against Hartzenberg. Still ball going. Just brought down five minutes. That pick up and go from Aaron Roots. Oh, I think he's short. I think he's short. We're going to have to have a check here. Could be a great try. Could be short. Have to wait and see. My gut says he's short. Brilliant uh, work there from Hartzenberg and uh, Paul DeBet combining very well. But what a tackle that is from John Cooney. Diving to try and reel in Paul DeBet. So we all know he's got plenty, plenty of pace. And he reaches here, and I think Doak's done enough here. I think he's short, actually, his initial... Yeah, he is short. So if he has another go, that's double movement. And then the ball pops up. So yeah, I think he's well short. That was my initial reaction, was that he's short. Great take that from David McCann. Right, so 13 minutes into the second half and still no points this half. Just the seven points that were scored in the first 10 minutes. So we've basically been scoreless for uh, 43 minutes. So it's been a bit, it's been a bit boring from a, from a scoreline perspective. Uh, it's been a bit disjointed of the game, to be honest. It's not been the, the cleanest game. Not sure if it's wet down there. I thought I did saw a bit, see a bit of rain earlier, but it doesn't seem to be terrible conditions. just hasn't been phenomenal rugby so far. Hope you all see a bit of an improvement with the subs.
Add a bit of uh, Vuma, a bit of energy to the game. Huge scrum that from Stormers. And they win the penalty. That's really, really good work from them. That's absolutely massive. That's France Mohaber dominating Steven Kitsov. He'll enjoy that, will uh, France. He'll leave me a word of a beer about that later. Not sure if uh, Kits sees to provide some bomb squad beer for the buggers. That was a massive scrum coming from Stormers. Yeah, I mean, he's done a, done a bit of a job. But to be fair, it's more on uh, Brock Harris's side, really. Making the points here, Stormers. I mean, you see a scrum like that, and you think, well, maybe a scrum, but... Uh... Look, if Marty Debog misses this, then 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 you really got to wonder. But I'm surprised at the decision. I know they need to get the points on the board, but um, you look at a scrum like that. Yeah, no issues this time for Marty Debog. The storm was a final on the board. Three points to seven after 54, almost 55 minutes. And uh, Hershey Yankees comes onto the park and he would play as Paul DeVette. So uh, I think Moss is still remains in the bench as far as I can see. RJ Smith as well, Leon Lyons and Ben Loder. Not too many subs on. That's just the fourth one. Ah, there you go, Ben Loder. Looks to go onto the wing, so I'd imagine Leon's that's the one who placed. It's for Dan Duplessis. So uh, Hartenberg will go to outside center, and that will be the change. Not sure why the commentator reckons that Hartenberg will go to inside center. Very much will not. And the knock on there from I'll still the kick off there, so it will be a storm of scrum. But yeah, no, Hartzenberg will definitely go to outside center. That's a pretty easy one to work out. Well, at least I think so. Yeah, still no Martin Tennyson, so that was a wrong early on the scoreboard. So just uh, five subs so far. Um, for Ulster, well, here comes a new front row, brand new front row. Stephen Kitsop will get a, a, a round of applause from uh, the Stormers faithful. Right, so now a brand new front row here for Ulster. Tom Stewart, Andrew Warwick, and Scott Wilson onto the park. Let's see if they can then cope with uh, the monstrosity that is France Malherbe. Much, much more uh, stability there this time. And an overlap there from Lee. Not the best pass for Willem. So it goes to Warwick Alain. Warwick Alain goes to that right boot. And it's a bounce over. It's still going. I tell you what, it's a great kick. Put Stuart Moore in. A lot of pressure. And uh, Ben Loder with a great chase has charged it down. It'll be an Ulster five meter line out. That's a brilliant kick from Warwick Alain. A brilliant chase from uh, Ben Loder. Well, the top two, Leon, it's, oh, no, he's lost it forward. Turn over ball there from the Stormers and then couldn't, couldn't, couldn't capitalize. Been the story, story of the night, hasn't it? Post but no cigar. Looking to try and take it quickly there, Alster. And JJ Kotsu was alive to the threat. Was he tackled on the air? Is that the, is that the penalty advantage? Hmm. Yeah, penalty for the Stormers, and 
strange decision to try and take it quickly there from um Tom Stewart and JJ Cotta was brilliant to uh to read the situation and um and managed to get himself in the air, win a penalty. Now Stormers will have a five beta line out. So can they uh come back from behind? They've been behind for most of the game. Not so much I mean both on the scoreboard and in the way that the, the game's actually been played. But not all of a sudden they're on the five meter line. Bit of momentum, 22 minutes left on the clock. You do kind of feel it's going to be a low-scoring game. So this could literally be the um, the difference here. They were to score. Yeah, JJ Kotz, first things first. He's the, hit his man. And he goes to the front of the line. Ruben van Heerden. Keep it nice and reliable. Now looking for the rolling more here, our Stormers. And oh, they're going to steam. No, it's turnover ball. They've lost it forward. They've lost it forward. And I'll tell you what, Alstor wants to go down on the left-hand side there. Um, but it was a knock on initially. The ref had called. I don't know if there was a double knock on. That's maybe why he had to call it. Oh, we go where the knock on comes here. Oh, yeah, the ball gets lost in the bottom there. A couple of Stormers fans are looking very impressed with life. Another big scrum, yeah. So it was much, much more stable with the new front row from Alistair. So I'll be looking to try and just anchor this, really, and allow uh, Nathan Doak to, to clear. Marcus Rea, Dave Shanahan, and uh, Jake Flannery still on the bench for Alistair. Uh, Cormac uh, Uzuchukwe has come on. And off the back of the scrum goes Nick Timoney. Try and run and find a bit, a bit, of, a, a bit of space there. Now back to the pocket is Nathan Doak. Bit of a snap kick, really, from him. And I don't think you'll find touch yet. Ben Loder underneath it. Ben Loder almost fumbles the ball in contact. Storm is back outside of 22. Hershey Yankees goes to Achiba Diamani. Working hard on the tackle is Diamani. Dixon, a bit of a show and go. He gets driven back, actually. Good tackle on Dixon. Then he pops up to Mike Leibach. He sells a bit of a dummy. Then pops up to Evan Ruiz. He wasn't really expecting it, but uh, puts his head down and carries it anyway. Now Yankees down the right hand side goes to Ben Jason Dixon. Nice solid carry from the replacement. Over the ball, though, was an attempt. Oh, a little scoop off the ball off the ground there for Brock Harris. A little chip over the top for Morika Lunch. To my Nibok, who gets it back. Needs some options. Needs to try and stay on speed as long as possible. It's a great effort there for Ruben here and to bust a gun and get there. Penalty advantage, though, from Ulster. Phillips is going to ask about a card. I don't think it will be. But that's fantastic work from Ruben here. And the support play for him to get up there so quickly and provide support for Martin Leibach. Yeah, he does get the yellow card. Wondered about it. Phillips asked the question. The referee has obliged. And Ulster will be down to 14 men. This has to be the time where Stormers capitalize. 90 minutes left on the clock. They'll play more than half of those with a one-man advantage. Surely, 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 this is now where they can start to... Uh, Click into gear and get some points back. So David McCann will go into the sin bin for the next 10 minutes. He'll come back on with less than 10 minutes on the clock. Looks like the Stormers are shaping up to go to the line. It does indeed still look like the Stormers are shaping to go to the line. Brock Harris is getting some treatment there. So I think we'll see Leon Lyons in the next 10 minutes or so. There's another Stormers player down as well. I believe that's Salman Mura too. I think we'll probably also still be getting back to uh, match fitness. Hasn't played a lot this season. The Stormers captain. Such good work that from Rune Van Heerden. And then just diving over there. David McCann, pretty silly, really. Always going to be a yellow card. And I think this could be the end of Solomon Murat. He's had a bit of stretch there. No, he's back up and jumping up and down. They do still have a replacement of Marcel Tennyson. Um, they can replace Solomon Murat and move um, Ben J. Dixon to the second row. If they want to. Oh, in fact, they're lying. They're still RJ Smith. So they've got a, they've got a like for like replacing the former, right? So if they need to bring, bring him off. Right, Jadja Kotsa, ball in hand once again. Uh, 61 minutes and 30 seconds have gone. Still no try from the Stormers. And they've lost the line out. Huge moment in that, potentially, in the game. Nathan Doak coming away with it. Really, really poor, actually, to, to lose a line in that sort of situation. Went to the back. Not sure it was the right decision, really. I'll just keep it simple, you know? 
I think they read the fact that Ulster were going to try and compete and try to uh, adjust for it, but yeah, a bit messy now. John Q is going to try and clear. He needs to find a good clearance here for Ulster, who've been really parked inside their 22 in the last sort of 10 minutes. And um, it's found them a temporary reprieve. It's found them to touch about five minutes past 22. But the Storm is very much still on the front foot, Chip. Ah, I lied. It was actually just a clean win for Mr. Chukwe. Here come the final subs. There goes Leon Lyons. I believe it was Marcel Tennyson. And I think that's RJ Smith as well coming on for some impact here. So Salomon Rat will make way for RJ Smith. Marcel Tennyson on. I don't see a Chiba Daimani. I do see an Evan Ruiz. Uh, so I believe that will be the sub there. And Brock Harris will make way. Still doing the business, Brock Harris. Mendes Dixon, good uh, lineup there. Here's Shiankis goes to Leboff. Front football to Marcel Tennyson. His first carry of the match. And uh, Hirsch Yankees always caught in the ball there. Good work there from RJ Smith. Ruben van Heerden. He gets the offload away to Ben Jason Dixon. Looking for the offload and he loses the ball forward. Just hold on to the ball, man. Lock on advantage here for Ulster. I'm looking to run out of the 22, yeah? Nick Timoney goes back on the angle. It's away from Ruiz, but brought down just short of the 22. John Cooney goes to the, the left-hand side. Now Nathan Doak will go to the boot. Not his best kick, I don't think. So uh, it's up towards 10 meter line. Once again, it's just pinning Storm is slightly back, but Storm is still very much on the attack here. So just being camped out inside Ulster territory without being able to really find some points from it. Bit of chuckles in the, uh, the Ulster coaching staff. Not quite sure what uh, they're finding so amusing. Maybe the fact that they're still hanging on, who knows? McCloskey in a treatment there. He's in a lot of pain there. They do have a sub in the Jake Flannery that could come on. Good work there. Looking for the Rony Moya Stormers. Much better set this time. And they're still going, still going. Just caught down short there of the 22. Pick up and go from Ben Jason Dixon. All available there for Hirsch Yankee. So I think he's actually at the bottom of the, of the rack there. So digging over there is uh, JJ Kotza. Goes to Evan Ruiz. Tell you what, if, Alster, if this score remains like this, it's a proper grind out win from Alster. And knocked on there from Hershey Yankees. Been a little bit awkward so far as Hershey Yankees. Not been quite at the at uh, at the races. And once again, Austin just managing to turn, find a turnover. First carry of the game there for Leon Lyons. Eleven handling errors from the Stormers, eight from Ulster. Similar issues to the Lions earlier, really. It's a lack of accuracy. Good scrum there from Stormers, but the ball is available for Cooney. Goes to the right-hand side to Doak. Doak goes to the boot. Really trying to get themselves back into Stormers' territory. Warwick Lan underneath it. Looking for options. Goes to the right boot. Goes to the left-hand side there. Cooney underneath it. Goes inside. Should more. He goes even deeper. Back to Warwick Lan. Warwick Lan's got the set 22. 
returns the favor. Won't look to find touch. Oh, that's a phenomenal kick. That's an absolute phenomenal kick. Warwick Lund has gone from 22 to 22. That is brilliant from him. Goodness me. Also, desperately trying to win the possession battle. Desperately trying to set them back. I mean, the territory battle, rather. And uh, Warwick Lund's put uh, themselves back inside their own half, past the 10-meter line. And uh, that's really, really good work. So also, I mean, I'd love to see the, the territory in the second half. Probably the opposite of what we saw in the first half, to be honest. Up there for uh, Nick Timoney. Slow boy here for Master. Just trying to wrestle back a little bit of possession, a bit of momentum. He's going to go to the boot, yeah. Nick Timoney, good tackle there from Hershey. He's got nice and quick here, nice and low. Slow ball there, and Jock's at the base of the rack, though, so they're going to need to go through a couple of phases to get it back out of it. Now, as mentioned by Alfred Lingen, they're down to 40 men, you are still not really looking like it at the moment with the way the Stormers are playing. Now, it's a deep kick in there for uh, Leon Zass. He looked to pass, then decided to go himself, almost through one tackle. It's a good tackle on the end there, coming from Tom Stewart. Now, to Kalan. Kalan going to Wally Leibach. Leibach looking at the options, brings across to Ben Loder. Ben Loder looking to straight, and now goes outside. Brought down uh, inside at Ulster territory. Quick ball for Hirsch Yankees. Back to him from here. Pops it to Warwick Kalant, looking to inject a bit of pace. And Marcel Tillerson comes into to join the party. Back to Kalant. Ah, and that's really poor from RJ Smith, who I don't think should have gone for it. And then it came off him to Mike Leibach. And uh, knock on advantage of four Ulster. Rob Balakoon's come away with it, so they're going to want to play here. But then RJ Smith gets into a good position for the Jackal, and they'll go back for the knock on. Staying in the contest show, Ulster. And Storm is a bit better intent, really, there, but accuracy is not, not there at all. I mean, this over here is a great uh, offload to Marcel Tunis. A bit of a no-look pass there. Then he's there once again. Then he throws the, the young pass out wide, and it's over the head. And yeah, I mean, RJ Smith is turning to get it, whereas Molly Leibach and Damien Blitz will be running on to the pass. So I don't know if there was a call to say leave it, but uh, yeah, a difficult one, though, I think, for RJ Smith to really judge if anybody was uh, behind and was going to be able to run onto it or whether he felt that he had to go for it, which is clearly was the case, hence him going for it. But it'll be a scrum for Ulster. What an armrest it's been. Just 10 points in 68 minutes so far. Right, uh, off to the back of the scrum, I'll still go to the boot, and uh, Storm is building from inside their own half once again. Move here has been relentless, good to offload that, but uh, lined up was the tackle by McElroy, and uh, Hartenberg read it uh, well and just rode the tackle. Van Heerden, inside ball now to RJ Smith, the two locks combining, here. Van Heerden getting it away to Evan Ruiz, but forward in the tackle, unfortunately for the Stormers, and that's kind of been the... Uh, the theme of the game, hasn't it? You know, a knock on here, a, a forward pass, just not the ball retention really poor. And it's nice, it's all very nice for these sort of fancy offloads there. I'm interested to see that. So I think the Stormers players were playing that it can actually came off a Ulster hat. We have to see it from the reverse angle, we'll be able to verify that. But I don't think we're going to get that replay. And uh, the yellow card's got less than a minute on it, and Stormers have yet to make them really pay for it. 
not been at the races have the staff concise really so far this uh, weekend sharks to get a victory but i'm told that should have been a lot more points bulls getting hammered lines outplayed At the moment, Stormers, yeah, not good enough. Oh, a bit of a slip there from Nathan Doak as he kicked that. Ben Lode having to go all the way back to 22 to retrieve. Our Holland, he's going to look to find touch here, I think. Goes to his left boot, won't find touch. Right, options here for Cooney. Goes to the boot, Nathan Doak's going to make, give a chase here. And it's un uncontested by Evan Lewis. Comes away from Ulster. This is an opportunity for them. Nathan Doak looking for options. Ships over the top. Well read that from Alison Mayman Hartsburg. Throws it inside to Master of Tienes. It pops up to Damon Williams. Damon Williams looking for options. Goes to Leon Zass. Rob Balakun gets up to make the tackle. Now on the right hand side. Monty Nibok throws a long pass out to Warwick Holland. Looking for his options here, Warwick Holland. Sides to go himself. Just drifting down the right hand side. Brings in Evan Lewis. Pops it into JJ Kotza. Good pass back inside. Oh, Frostman Herbert. Ball over the top from Frostman Herbert to Ben Loader. Now they're like a tight end with a good offload. Now Kalant. Hartzenberg. Storm is a bit of a space here. Drifting is Hartzenberg. Goes out to Leon Zass. Leon Zass looks to put the afterburners on. It's a great covering tackle for Rob Balakun. Then Vincent throws it back inside. Ben Jason Dixon back on the angle. Not sure it's the best decision, but uh, Storm is still with a bit of momentum here. Hershey Yankees now goes to uh, Ruben Van Heerden. He's got support from Leon Lyons. Penalty advantage here for the Storm is much better from the home side. Long pass out onto the run there from Hartenberg. A 2 one situation for Evan Ruiz. Gets past him one. He's running away. Oh, Ben Loder can't believe it. Ruben Van Heerden still going. And they've lost it forward. Uh, ben Loder, uh, rightfully, is fuming, I think, with Evan Ruiz. A two-in-one situation. Evan Ruiz took on the one, got past the one, and then ran away from his support. If he had run at the trial line, Ben Loder could have been in here. So there's the offside. But I just want to see this two-in-one situation here. Evan Ruiz, I think, could have played Ben Loder in for a try here. Nathan Doak dead in his feet. I've been impressed with him today. A couple of subs here from Ulster. Looks like uh, that's Marcus Rare. As well as the yellow card. Right. Marcus Rare facing Matty Rare. It will still be a penalty for Stormers, so still an opportunity for them. And you do feel that this is going to be whoever scores next will, will, will win the game. They kick to the corner, yeah. Three points not enough anymore at this stage. Was tight there, almost uh, almost kicked it uh, dead. Amy Baratron deciding it was just in inside the field of play. We've been here at the front. They've got a bit of a run yet, do they? Got a run, got the run, and somebody got the ball though. And there it is. They finally find the breakthrough in the 70, what, fourth minute? Stormers are over. Looks like it's Marcel Tennyson. That could be the game. They finally take the lead. And uh, I'll tell you what, they've let it very late to do it. Well, they've left it late, but I think they might have done enough here, the Stormers. The great line there by Ruben Van Heeren. Huge, huge shove early on. Didn't even get time to get it back to... Um, no, it's not Master Tennyson. Who scored this? Did they get it back to JJ Kotza? Who's got this ball here? I think it's Evan Ruiz, in fact. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's Evan Ruiz who's got the ball. Oh, he'll take it. Not quite the standard sort of uh, Evan Ruiz try. You'll see him score, but he'll take them however they come.
pretty important kick this because the miss here from Mighty Block means that three points will be enough for Ulster to win. If he does nail this, it means that Ulster have to score a try to win. Ulster penalty will be enough to draw, which will be an interesting result in itself. Very low scoring game though, just 15 points in it. Are we about to see 16 and 17 points? Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, straight down the middle there. That's a big, important kick there for Stormers. Right, I'll still have to score a try in the last five minutes if they are to get a victory here. Uh, a penalty will only get them a draw. Now the question is, can the Stormers hold on for five minutes after having been attacking for the last sort of 40 really relentlessly? Now, sort of the boots on the other foot here, Ulster are going to do all the attacking and, Ulster, and uh, Stormers are going to have to absorb the pressure. They go short through Ulster. And thrown back by Rob Batacoon, but doesn't go straight out. Frustrating for him to be able to get in front and push the ball back with nobody there to really receive it. It was good work there from the wing. All right, so Stormers line out, just under five minutes left on the clock. And they compete to Ulster, and it gets thrown back towards uh, Stormers. But Hoshi uh, Yakin's on a bit of pressure there, throwing around, but he's managed to stay inside. Stormers players do get back to support. They're inside their own 22 now, though. Ben Jason Dixon hit behind the advantage line. Good defense this year from Ulster. Now Stormers need to find a good clearance here. Game on a knife edge. He's going to go to the boot chairs, Herschel. He needs to find a good clearance. We'll find a clearance. Not phenomenal, not bad. About halfway between the 10 meter and the 22. But uh, Alston now on the front foot. And the Stormers have won the line. Well, that's a big moment. JJ Kotz are coming away. JJ Kotz is finally a bit of space. And he goes to the boot. Looking for the 50-22. This could be phenomenal from JJ, phenomenal from JJ Kotz. I can tell you now, this man is the first rugby player. That is phenomenal. That is... I mean, it's incredible to think that the modern-day forward has it in him to turn around, make that run. This is Hooker, by the way. See the halfway line and go to the boot. Inside his half, he finds... That is... And all of a sudden, Stormers are inside of 22. Another try here, and the game's been wrapped up. And they're on the front foot, yeah? Could you imagine from being... Oh, I'll tell you what, they're almost over. It was JJ Kotz himself, actually. Dixon, just short, yeah? Stormers on the front foot. Penalty advantage as well. This should be the game for them. Leibach! Show and go here by himself. Ah, a bit selfish. Not sure it's really on for him. Over the top from Damien Phillips on the pass. Ah, oh, Ben Lowe has knocked it forward. We'll go back for the penalty. Big opportunity though. They can just kick to the corner and go once again. And that'll be 90 seconds left. Offside call right in front of the pass. Take the three points. Yeah, I think Stormers will do it. And say thank you very much. Good game. And we'll move on to the next one. Scrum. I suppose it runs down the clock. But I mean, a penalty here. And you allow Alster back in. I suppose three points still means a converted try doesn't, doesn't get them the, the... They're still within a converted try of it. But... Uh... Surprised by that decision, given the fact that the line's been working quite well. I mean, you kick to the corner, you run down the time. I suppose you run down the time with the scrum as well. Might change if we start seeing a scrum clock. 
which is being talked about. And I'm, I'm for the scrum clock. I like scrums. I'm going to keep scrums, but I'm going to speed up scrums. Rob Balakou and Karen, you're receiving a bit of treatment. We're into the last minute, by the way, when the scrum will eventually be formed. Right, big scrum, yeah. 46 left on the clock here. If I'll still going to say any chance, they're going to win a penalty. That's the equation. And a reset is not going to help things. Now it's down to 30 seconds left on the clock. So Stormers, I think, have stolen this right at the death. Right, 10 seconds left. Anything short of a penalty, and this will be game, set, and match for the Stormers. And uh, I'll tell you what, they made tough work of it, but I suppose they got there in the end. And there's the penalty. Now they can just take the points, get an extra three points on the, the points difference, and we're going to close it there, I think. For Australian for Ulster, they held Stormers out for, uh, yeah, I mean, 70 odd minutes. When did they score that, that, that try? 74. So 74 minutes they held out. Um, they are going to get there in the end there, Storm. It's not convincing. Not convincing. But uh, I suppose the result's the main thing. It's four points. And uh, they will continue to remain in the top eight. In fact, I think with these four points, I think they can actually go up to fifth place, fourth place. Um, they'll go tied fourth with Munster, uh, who are still to play, I think. I think they play tonight. I think it's a Hoppers 9 game, yeah, against Cardiff. So expect them to get that result. But a uh, win is a win for the Stormers. They'll go ahead of Stormers and I mean of Benetton, so they'll go into fifth place. I'll still remain in ninth. Um, they will have a, a bonus point though. They will be within seven, so they will go up thirty five points. A level on points to Ospreys. Um, points difference though will be below them. Right, my little at the extras people. Thank you very much. It's been a long day of rugby. Um, we've had three games in a row. So thank you very much for joining all of us over the weekend. We had Ruse last night. Kel earlier myself for the last two games. My name is DOP. Please do subscribe if you're new and we will see you guys all next weekend for another blockbuster weekend of rugby action.